Good morning, everyone. If we could stand for the Angelus. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, How Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. How Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And the word was made flesh. How Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the divine assistance remain always with us, and may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Today we celebrate the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time, and this Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Kevin Orion. In our Gospel today, Jesus once again challenges the Pharisees. They believe that you can be unclean by eating certain things. But our Jesus uh, responds by saying, no, it's what comes out of someone that makes them unclean. And so, aware of this, let's think of the things that have come out of us by word or action that have made us unclean. And let us ask our Lord to wash us with his mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
a reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Now Israel, take notice of the laws and customs that I teach you today, and observe them, that you may have life and may enter and take possession of the land the Lord, of, the Lord God of your fathers is giving you. You must add nothing to what I command you, and take nothing from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God, just as I lay them down for you. Keep them, observe them, and they will demonstrate to, the, to peoples your wisdom and understanding. When they come to know all these laws, they will exclaim, no other people is as wise and prudent as this great nation. And indeed, what great nation is there that has, not, has its gods so near as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call to him? And what great nation is there that has laws and customs to match the whole law that I put before you today? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The just will live in the presence of the Lord. Just. Lord, who shall dwell on your holy mountain? He who walks without fault, who acts with justice and speaks the truth from his heart. The just will live in the presence of the Lord. He who does no wrong to his brother, who casts no slur on his neighbour, who holds the godless is in disdain, but honours those who fear the Lord. The just will live in the presence of the Lord. He who keeps his pledge, come what may, who takes no interest on a loan and accepts no bribes against the innocent, such a man will stand firm forever. The just will live in the presence of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St James. It is all it is all that is good everything that is perfect which gi is given from given us from above it comes down from the father of all light with him there is no no such thing as alteration no shadow of change by his own choice he made us his children by the message of truth so that we should be the sort of first fruits of all that he had created. Accept and submit to the word which has been planted in you and can save your souls. But you must do what the word tells you and not just listen to it and deceive yourselves. Pure, unspoilt religion in the eyes of God our Father is this, coming to the help of orphans and widows when they, when they need it and keeping oneself uncontaminated by the world. The word of the Lord. Our spirit, Lord, and they are life. You have the message of eternal life. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The Pharisees and some of the scribes had come from Jerusalem, gathered round Jesus, and they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with unclean hands, that is, without washing them. 
for the Pharisees and the Jews in general follow the tradition of the elders and never eat without washing their arms as far as the elbow. And on returning from the marketplace, they never eat without first sprinkling themselves. There are also many other observances which have been handed down to them concerning the washing of cups and pots and bronze dishes. So these Pharisees and scribes asked him, why do your disciples not respect the tradition of the elders, but eat their food with unclean hands? He answered, it was of you hypocrites that Isaiah so rightly prophesied in this passage of scripture. This people honors me only with lip service, while their hearts are far from me. They worship, the worship they offer me is worthless. The doctrines they teach are only human regulations. You put aside the commandments of God to cling to human traditions. He called the people to him again and said, listen to me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that goes into a man from outside can make him unclean. It is the things that come out of a man that make him unclean. For it is from within, from men's hearts, that evil intentions emerge. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, malice, deceit, indecency, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within and make a man unclean. The Gospel of the Lord. So I think that um, sometimes uh, we have a kind of uh, two ways we can look at the law. Because I think the readings all of today are about law. And we can have a funny relationship with law because sometimes we realize that the laws uh, that are, say, in our country protect us. Uh, and seeing police maybe driving or walking around our area for some of us, it makes us feel secure. But then sometimes we can feel that the law is just too fussy, too intricate, too, uh, there's, there's something wrong with it. So I know that uh, there's been times, I remember one time specifically when I parked on a road and my back wheel, probably only about an inch, was, was on a double yellow line, just the, just the smallest bit. Walked away, came back, and what do I find, of course, uh, on my screen, uh, but a uh, parking fine. Now, I, I, I couldn't find the, uh, the, the traffic warden. It was probably a good thing I couldn't. But, um, and I know that arguing with them doesn't make any difference anyway. Um, but it's sort of little things like that, and maybe you've experienced something similar, where sometimes the practice of the law just seems too fussy. But whatever we think about uh, the law and how it's practiced. We know that um, certainly within the Jewish tradition, the law that was given by God was something that was treasured. And we hear uh, Moses saying to the people today, take notice of the law that I teach you today. That Moses has heard from God, he wants them to practice the, the God's law. Why? Because it leads them into a uh, uh, a great place, a, a holy place, a safe place, a happy place. We all know what, what a lawless society might look like, and certainly there are still countries now that, that really don't have the kind of laws that, that we have, and they've become dangerous places. But so we know that, that law is a good thing. It was certainly something that the Jewish people treasured, because um, it set them apart as well from cultures that they were surrounded by, the Canaanites, who often practiced, unfortunately, child sacrifice. And there were other cultures that surrounded uh, the Holy Land that were living lawless and godless lives. But this law was given to, uh, uh, to Moses and to the people of God so that they could shine out, so that others could see what it is like to live according to the commandments of God. Now, uh, we go now to our Lord and his view of the law. Now, we could look at this gospel and think, oh, well, maybe uh, Jesus didn't respect the law, but that's just not true. 
He actually says in our, in our gospel today, you have discarded the commandments of God and clung to human traditions. Jesus had a real respect for the commandments. When the rich young man goes to Jesus and says in the gospels, um, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus says immediately to him, follow the commandments. So he had a real respect for the law, uh, God's law. But it seems the thing that he did struggle with was these little traditions that have been built up, like washing your hands up to the elbow as the Pharisees did, or just sprinkling themselves a, a little bit after coming back from the marketplace. And he's saying, you know, you've forgotten the important laws. You know, if you cling and remember all these little things and you stick to them like a bean counter, just to the very, very dot and, and, and letter, then you're going to forget about the big things. So that's why we hear that reading from St. James today, who says that true religion is good when we reach out to the most vulnerable. When Jesus was asked what the greatest commandment of the law was, he immediately said, love God and love neighbor as yourself. And I think, of course, he was right about that. You know, um, yes, there are lots of little laws and bylaws, and there was about 360 laws altogether in, within, within the Torah. And he's saying, no, look, don't, don't, don't worry so much about the little things. It's a little bit like um, medieval knights used to wear armor to protect themselves, and it was a very good thing at the beginning because it protected um, their body. And so in battle, the, uh, just wearing the armor meant that they were protected. Um, but over time, the, the, lots of different things were added, and it was found that the medieval knights actually couldn't fight properly because the armor was so heavy. And that's what I think Jesus is kind of saying to the Pharisees here. Look, you've added so many things, little things, that your law has become far too heavy, and you can't see the wood for the trees. Law is a good thing. If you think about it, um, law, uh, we, we preserve things in law that we value. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, um, I know that if you were to go into a, 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 a art gallery, say, with precious works of art, uh, Caravaggio or Michelangelo or, or Van Gogh or whoever it might be, you'll find that the laws um, within those galleries are very, very stringent, very, very strict. You can't just pick up the Mona Lisa and walk off with it and change it how you will. No, because those things are of value. So we surround them with law because we, we know that it's, they're good things and so we need to protect them. Law is a good thing, but when it comes down to uh, maybe forgetting the most important things, that's when Jesus steps in and says, look, no, you must remember the most important commandments. Love God, love your neighbor as yourself. So let's pray that we may stay true to the commandments. But let's also remember, let's not to get too weighed down with the minutia of, of law. And let's pray for the wisdom to know the difference. Amen. We stand now to profess our faith. I believe in one God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, 
who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Lord God, we come before you humbly offering our prayers for ourselves and for the many men, women and children who are in need at this present time. We pray for world leaders as they try to find a just solution to the crisis in Afghanistan. May they ease the suffering and anxiety of the people who are afraid for their lives and their futures. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the people of Haiti as they struggle to come to terms with the aftermath of the recent earthquake. May they find the support and the courage that they need to rebuild their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all frontline workers who bring care to people who are elderly, sick or vulnerable in any way. May they experience hope and appreciation in their efforts to give dignity and support to others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all students and their teachers as they look forward to the next academic year. May it be a time of sharing and growth towards a hope-filled future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We seek the intercession of Mary as we say, Hail Mary, Mary full, full of grace, grace the, Lord the Lord is with thee. thee. Blessed art thou among women, and, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, womb Jesus. Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, God, pray for our sinners now, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Loving God, we know that you are with us at every moment of every day. Give us the courage and strength that we need to come closer to each other and to you. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Alan our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brother Kevin, who has fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 
At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. How great is the goodness, Lord, that you keep for those who fear you.
Let us pray. Renewed by the bread from the heavenly table, we ask you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you and our neighbour, through Christ our Lord. Amen. If you please be seated. Now, tomorrow is a bank holiday, and um, as usual, our Mass is slightly later, and so it won't be at 9.30 tomorrow, it will be at 10 a.m. Now, if you're interested in becoming a Catholic, maybe you've been coming to church for a while or even a short time, and you would like to join us, then the doors are open. Um, we'd love to receive you into the church. And so the course is going to start in October, and there's no obligation to even become a Catholic, even when you're on the course. So if you're thinking, maybe, I don't know, I want to know a little bit more, then join us in October. Now, um, if you're interested, then please see me either after Mass or give me a call or an email, um, and we'll let you know more about that. So that's a course for those who are maybe thinking of joining us and being in full communion, then please see me or email or call me. Now, application forms are available in the porch for the baptism preparation course, which is the course for children, not for adults. That's what I was talking about just before. This is a baptism preparation course for children. And also, uh, there is an application form for First Holy Communion 2022. So you'll see those as you leave. Now, Confirmation 2022 is open to uh, those who are, who are in school year 10 or above. And if you're interested in that, then please let me know. But remember to email the parish office if you're interested. Now, it's my sad duty to tell you uh, about those who have died in our community. So I ask your prayers for Claire Wallace, Margaret Whitbread, George Foley, and Thomas Lynch. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. And may their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Well, the great day has come. Father last night was clinging on to 49 <laughs> by his fingernails, but the day is actually here. So, the first thing I would like to say is our choir, for those who were there last night, our choir performed and they were quite sensational. And I have to say they were absolutely sensational again today. So could we give them a massive round of applause, please? Now, through both churches' great generosity, it was wonderful that we could give Father his gift, which was £1,600 raised by yourselves. So give yourselves a round of applause. And I think at this moment, Lisa is going to lead us in a rendition of Happy Birthday. So thank you everyone. Um, do you know earlier this year when I knew obviously I was going to be turning 50, I thought, oh, I'll, I'll, don't tell anyone, don't tell anyone, I'll just try and sort of, just, try to just forget about it and I'll tell people that I'm 48 or 49 if they ask. But no, no, here we are, uh, I, I can't lie, uh, it's one of the Ten Commandments, so like, uh, uh, here we are, I'm 50, and it feels strange to be 50, um, but... Um, the one thing I'm so happy about 
is that I'm spending my 50th with you. Uh, I was born on a Sunday, which um, maybe was some sort of sign for me uh, to my vocation. But it's lovely to be able to spend my birthday with you. I, I've, I've been in a number of parishes, parishes since I was ordained in 2002. Um, and I've never been happier than I have been amongst you. So I'd like to thank you for being here and for making my life so happy. It's very easy to be a parish priest when I have a community such as yours. So it's lovely to be able to spend my 50th with you. Yesterday, I had a, 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 a lot of presents and a lot of cards, and I've got that today as well. So thank you, everyone, for, for that very generous gift that Liam has spoken of and all, all the bottles and uh, chocolates and everything else that, that you've given me. Thank you ever so much. But the best gift I had was given to me yesterday. Uh, I was outside and a woman uh, um, was speaking to me and, um, and I said, oh, it's my 50th birthday tomorrow. And she said, what, you're not 50, you look 35. <laughs> so really, really grateful for the money and the wine and the chocolate, but that was possibly one of the best gifts I've, I've ever had uh, for my 50th. So how do I spend that 1,600 pounds? Well, uh, later today, I'll look on what's on the green, amber, and red list, see where I can go. Uh, but wherever I go, I miss you. Um, so once again, thank you for being here for me, and it's a privilege to be here for you. But just as I finish, once again, a thank you, real big thank you to our choir. You will have noticed a fairly new song um, in uh, Mass today, and that's The Blessing. And they sang it beautifully for me uh, last night, and I hope that will be part of your repertoire uh, going forward, because I think it's an absolutely beautiful hymn uh, uh, to, to speak of the blessing of God upon us. And certainly at 50 years old, I feel like God has blessed me, and I know he's blessed you may continue to do so. But there's one other person I'd like to thank um, that arranged a lot of things yesterday and does a lot of things for me and makes my life a lot easier, and that's Liam. So can we give Liam a <laughs> I'd like to stand now for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. <laughs> may Almighty God bless you, guide and protect you always. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended.
Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah.